It feels hot. They're David and Goliath stories of young men taking on oil companies and explorations into the lives of farmers or fireflies. Above all, the documentaries playing at Princeton Public Library's ninth annual Environmental Film Festival are stories about our world. I think a lot of people are worried about if they come to an event like this, that it'll be negative and gloomy, and it's really actually the opposite. They really are inspiring stories. Princeton Public Library isn't alone. Washington, D.C., Yale, and Ithaca College also boast environmentally themed film festivals. This event is only getting bigger every year. I think people really care about these issues and things that maybe at one point were in the in the background are now in the forefront. Filmmaker Marcy Cravat says one of the great things about documentaries as vehicles for sharing information is the potential for mass appeal. There's this great opportunity to reach a mainstream crowd and not just preach to the choir. Cravat is currently working the environmental film festival circuit. Her documentary Angel Azul was originally following sculptor Jason DeCarys Taylor who first creates statues and then turns those statues into artificial coral reefs. Taylor is still a main focus, but Cravat also spends much of the film exploring the disappearance of coral reefs. Around the world, between 50 and 80 percent of the coral reefs are already gone. Coral reefs represent about 25 percent of the life in the ocean. So if the coral reefs are gone, right straight away we lose a huge chunk of the ocean ecosystem, which then affects all of the larger species that swim out in the open ocean. So it's a, the start of just a huge, huge decline. The experience has turned Cravat, who used to create short docs on artists, into an environmental film convert. Now I feel like I've sort of found my way into environmental documentary filmmaking and my next film is also going to be an environmental documentary. It's called Dirt Rich and will focus on efforts to move excess carbon from the air into the ground. Documentaries piqued Heather Farley's environmental interests too. She's pursuing a master's in business and science to study sustainability. I feel like you can learn something so quick, you know, within like an hour or so. Jaime's concern is the toll tourists are taking on the reefs and how to divert them away. I'm just trying to, you know, figure out these things that I'm interested in and, and trying to figure out, you know, what can bind them together and what kind of ways can um, I do something effectively about it. What kind of sacrifices to modern conveniences do people need to make in those types of places where things are being done better? Farley's not alone. Cravat's post-film Q&A quickly becomes a brainstorming session about what can be done to help. And that's what Conlon likes to see. In addition to hosting the festival, Princeton Public Library is organizing a related Let It Go community-wide yard sale to promote reuse and a trash -in show to promote recycling. In Princeton, I'm Maddie Orton for NJTV News.